So let's go ahead and debug this a little bit. You'll immediately notice that margin cost is set to zero and commission is set to zero. Now commission being set to zero is incorrect. Uh, it is unfortunately the one variable in this scenario which is not being pulled successfully from uh, the MetaTrader terminal by the API. So we're going to have to populate it and complete this picture. The rest of the information here, the latest asking price, um, the spread at this point in time, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, you want to be careful how you set these set these spreads up because these will be used in a backtesting context. They won't be used in live trading where uh, this will be updated in real time. Um, so for backtesting, you don't want very favorable spreads in, um, uh, in your assets configuration because you want to lean on the pessimistic side so that you don't inflate performance. Um, and at the same time, if it's too high, you could be deflating performance. For example, at this at this time that this video is being recorded, it's 12.32 a.m. Uh, Central European time. And that's probably a time when there's uh, usually higher spreads uh, in the picture. So at this point in time, your spreads here could be fairly high compared to other times of day where they could be lower, depending on what session we're in. So you want to lean on the pessimistic side, uh, generally speaking. And now let's look at all the rest of the information and see if it is stated correctly. And at the same time, we want to also recap on the definitions uh, of all the variables that we saw in assets.csv. Now, this hasn't populated our assetsfix.csv, but all the variables that we need to populate assetsfix.csv are here. So the very first thing we'll do, we'll just copy this information as we see it over here and go back to our history folder, open up assetsfix.csv, which doesn't have anything in it, paste this information over here, save the file, close the file. Anytime you update assetsfix.csv, you do have to restart Zorro. So that's what we will do now. I'm going to close Zorro and restart the instance. Get it back over here. And now you should see the list populated with the assets that we very recently filled out in assetsfix.csv. Our work here is not complete because even though assetsfix.csv does have the assets now, so you could technically trade at this point with a script um, that would trade directly through uh, MetaTrader in this case, utilizing real-time information. For backtesting, we're, we still haven't completed the picture. There's some important information missing. Firstly, for accurately backtesting your strategy, you absolutely must have the, the latest, most up-to-date picture in terms of transaction costs. Since commission here is zero, which is not the case, commission is charged at DarwinX, we need to find this information and populate it appropriately. You'll recall from the previous tutorial that commission is in this file specified as round turn or round trip commission in account currency units for opening and closing one contract or 10,000 contracts in the case of currencies, one contract in the case of any other asset. So for currencies, we have to specify this commission amount uh, as the commission charged on a mini lot, 10,000 contracts. But in the case of the stock here in our list, Apple, we will have to specify it as one uh, contract. So let's go back to the assets and spreads here, find the relevant information, and fill the rest of our assetsfix.csv file with it. So we have euro dollar, so let's go find euro dollar, which over here, let's first check if the values that have been pulled are correct or not. So let's go to the euro USD, which is over here, um, and look go through each of the inf pieces of information we have here and then validate that the assetsfix.csv has been populated correctly. Let me see if I can squeeze this here a little bit just so we can see both screens and we can. That's great. Okay. So with EURUSD, you can see that the roll long is set to negative 0.7. You'll recall that this is also set for currencies on per 10,000 contract size, which means per lot, uh, per mini lot. Therefore, if we go over to Euro dollar, you'll see that for contract size of 100,000 euros here, the swap long is charged at negative seven. Therefore, for mini lot, this since the negative seven dollars is per standard lot, for the mini lot, we'll have negative 0.7, which is stated here correctly. 
Same is the case for roll short. In this case, it's negative 0.7 USD, and that, as you can see, for the mini lot or 10,000 contract size, is set as negative 0.07. PIP value here is correct since the euro dollar fluctuates with 0 0.0001 as the PIP size, with point sizes being um, one digit more than that. PIP cost is calculated correctly. The account being a run on is a US dollar account. The account currency here is US dollars on this demo account, so that's been calculated correctly as well. Margin cost is set to zero since the broker uses leverage. And when uh, backtesting in this way, if margin cost is set to zero, then leverage is automatically used. And in real time, margin cost is calculated based on this leverage that's been pulled from the broker. Let's validate whether this leverage is correctly stated or, not, or correctly calculated or not. You'll probably know that this leverage is correct for these currencies at this point in time, but it's still good to take a look at this information and validate whether it's been um, stored correctly. So let's bring up the assets and spreads page again. Here, the margin required to uh, uh, by Darwin X is 3.33%. Therefore, at 3.33%, the leverage should be calculated at 30 point something, which is 30 to 1. And that's been calculated correctly here in the leverage column. Then if we, uh, we've we already gone through roll long and roll short, which are swap long and swap short, those have been calculated correctly per 10,000 contracts or per many lot in the cases uh, case of currencies. And this will be the same uh, for the GBP dollar as well as the US dollar Japanese yen. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.